particular problem? Let me talk about it. Yeah. All right, what's the formula for potassium? K solid. K solid. Yeah. I see a lot of errors. A lot of people put K plus. Is that potassium? You know what that is? That's potassium ion. Uh, do they have the same properties though? Are they the same thing? Can I treat them the same? No, they're totally different. You know, people need potassium for like cramps or whatever. People eat bananas for potassium. Are they eating bananas for potassium metal or for potassium ion? Ion. The potassium metal you aren't going to find in bananas for sure. You're going to find potassium ion. Um, that's because potassium metal is so unstable. So first clue that something something is going to happen here. First clue is if you have some familiarity. Do you have much familiarity with this chart? A lot of people have zero familiarity with this chart. But there are some people who do have a little bit of familiarity with this chart and recognize that potassium is something special. What's special about potassium? What is special about potassium? Yeah, it's one of the most powerful. It's not the most powerful, because the most powerful is lithium, but it's one of the most powerful reducers on the chart, which makes it extremely reactive. So getting familiarity with the chart just means you know, you know what's really reactive. Well, potassium metal is very reactive. It's not like, um, it's just, you know, it's not like you memorize it. I memorized it's number two on, no, it doesn't matter. You just memorize, you know, the things that are kind of really reactive, like the group one metals. All the group one metals are extremely reactive. Lithium, potassium, sodium, very reactive. And so uh, all of a sudden a red flag comes up, you know, potassium, very powerful. When I'm doing, if I'm doing single replacement, you know, this is one of the clues that tells you this might be one of the exceptions. You know, it might not work in this case. Plus well, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride solution is just what? NaCl. NaCl. I thought everybody used sodium with sodium chloride the formula for sodium chloride, but I was wrong. I found out in Chem 1A that one of the students didn't know the formula for sodium chloride. It was um, almost unbelievable. I mean, to get through Chem 4 without knowing NaCl is almost unbelievable. Or they just forgot it. Um, but NaCl, try not to forget. And the charge, I've seen this all the time in Chem 4, NaCl2, Na2Cl, NaCl, various charges, minus, plus, a whole bunch of stuff. Be careful with that. You know. so, uh, it's very important. If you can get the formulas uh, down good for Chem 1A, you'll leave a very positive impression. A lot of people aren't very good with nomenclature. So anyway, uh, we predict this is going to form um, potassium chloride and sodium. Well, which one's more active, potassium or sodium? Well, potassium is more active, so we're going from more active to less active. And we get driving force. So it's easy to be tricked here, but if, if you knew the chart a little bit, you'd see, well, there's something special about potassium. Okay, if you know this chart really um, pretty well, then where is water again placed in this chart? Between the and the sea. Yeah. It, with water placed here, it reacts with any reducer stronger than what's over here. And so water, did you know water can oxidize aluminum, water can oxidize magnesium, water can oxidize sodium, water can oxidize calcium, water can oxidize potassium, water can oxidize lithium. Because when any of these are, are oxides, they form these. And all these
these are weaker oxidizers than water. So we're going from a stronger oxidizer to a weaker oxidizer. However, water cannot oxidize zinc. Because if water tries to oxidize zinc, then we form Zn2+, plus, which is stronger. So we're going from weaker to stronger, which means it's not going to work. And so these metals, we have to be very careful with because these metals are, are highly reactive. They can react with water. So that, that's something else that can help you with the memorizations. So I, this turns out to be wrong, the wrong reaction, even though it's right. You know, it's right because you're following the, the rules or whatever. The, it's not the rules, the steps. And so what we have to do is we have to not use this method. We have to use the chart method. So using the chart method, the first thing we do is we inventory. And so what, what do we have? We have potassium solid, we have sodium ions aqueous, we have chloride ions aqueous, and we have one more species, and that is? Water. Water. And then we just look, uh, potassium metal, what is that? Well, that's a reducing agent, it's on the right side. Sodium ions, what's that? Oxidizing agent. Chloride ions. Chloride's be way up here. <coughs> Chloride is a. It's on the right side over here. Can you see? It? Chloride is a. Yeah, it's, it's really weak. It's a reducing agent. And water. Some people, they don't know that water occurs on both sides of the chart because they never look at the chart. But you know, right? Water occurs on both sides of the chart. It's both an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. There are other species that occur on both sides of the chart that I didn't tell you about. And so one of the most common errors that people do in chemical reactions is they find the species and they only look on one side. You know, the first side they find it on. They don't bother checking the other side, you know? And so what are some species that occur on both sides of the chart? Can you tell me any others that occur on both sides of the chart other than water? Okay, sulfates is one of those, yeah. Anybody find any other species that occur on both sides? Hydroxide. Um, sulfate, hydroxide, H2, hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide is a strange one um, because you know they aren't equal. You know, so for example, hydrogen peroxide we would call a powerful. On the left, we call it a powerful oxidizer. But when it occurs on the right. It's kind of a average reducer, so it's, it, it much prefers to be an oxidizer. So when most people think of hydrogen peroxide, they think of an oxidizer. That's how you get oxidizer. So those are the types of things. There are other species there too. Um, so you have to be careful about that. But anyway, which one's the strongest? Can you tell me the strongest out of these? strongest oxidizer and the strongest producer.
Did you guys get it? That's your strongest reducer. Yeah. Now it's the strongest reducer. And then water is your strongest oxidizer. Yeah, that's right. Okay, what do you do next? <laughs> 